Pan Am Flight 73, was a Pan American World Airways flight from Bombay, India, to New York, with scheduled stops in Karachi, Pakistan and Frankfurt, West Germany. On September 5, 1986, the Boeing 747-121 serving the flight was hijacked while on the ground at Karachi by four armed Palestinian men of the Abu Nadal organization. The aircraft, with 360 passengers on board, had just arrived from Bombay. A grand jury later concluded that the militants were planning to use the hijacked airliner to pick up Palestinian prisoners in both Cyprus and Israel. Forty three passengers were injured or killed during the hijacking, including nationals from India, the United States, Pakistan, and Mexico. All the hijackers were arrested and sentenced to death in Pakistan. However, the sentences were later commuted to life in prison. Nia Bannett, head attendant on the flight, posthumously received India's highest peacetime award for bravery, the Ashok Chakra Award for her efforts to save passengers' lives during the course of the hijacking. Hijacking at Karachi The Pan Am Flight 73 originated in Mumbai and stopped at the Karachi airport for a scheduled stop over at 4.55 am. It was carrying 394 passengers and nine infants, an American flight crew and 13 Indian flight attendants. A total of 109 passengers disembarked at Karachi. The first busload of fresh passengers from Karachi had barely reached the aircraft standing on the tarmac when the hijacking began to unfold. Two hijackers dressed in sky blue uniforms of the Pakistan Airport Security Force drove up to the aircraft in a van fitted with a siren and flashing lights. They rushed up the ramp, firing shots into the air. Another two hijackers joined the first two men, one of them dressed in Pakistani salwar kameez and carrying a briefcase full of grenades. There was also gun fire outside the aircraft reported around this time, which killed two Kuwait Airlines staff members working on an aircraft nearby. The hijackers fired shots at the feet of a flight attendant forcing him to close the door. Another flight attendant, Sherin Pavan, was out of sight of the hijackers and relayed the hijack code to the cockpit crew, who subsequently exited the aircraft via the inertial rail escape device. After about 40 minutes from the landing of Flight 73, the airliner came under the control of the hijackers. The exit of the pilots immobilized the aircraft. A subsequent CIA investigation revealed that the hijack occurred despite the presence of armed agents near the aircraft. The four hijackers were dressed as Karachi Airport security guards and were armed with assault rifles, pistols, grenades, and plastic explosive belts. The hijackers drove a van that had been modified to look like an airport security vehicle through a security checkpoint up to one of the boarding stairways to Pan Am Flight 73. The four hijackers were later identified as Zaid Hassan Abd al Latif Safarini, Safarini, alias Mustafa, Jamal Saeed Abdul Rahim, alias Farhad, Muhammad Abdul Khalil Hussein R. Rahayal. Khalil and Muhammad Ahmed al Munawar, alias Mansour. Pakistani authorities also identified another accomplice, Wadud Muhammad Hafiz al Turki, Hafiz, and arrested him a week later. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Demand for pilot. Within a short time after seizing control of the aircraft, the lead hijacker Safarini realized that the cockpit crew had escaped and therefore he would be forced to negotiate with officials. First and business class passengers were ordered to go towards the back of the plane. At the same time, passengers at the back of the plane were ordered forward. Since the aircraft was nearly full, passengers sat down in the aisles, galleys and door exits. 
At approximately 10 o'clock, Safarini went through the plain and arrived at the seat of Rajesh Kumar, a 29-year-old Indian-American resident of California who had recently been naturalized as an American citizen. Safarini ordered Kumar to come to the front of the aircraft, to kneel at the front doorway of the aircraft, and to face the front of the aircraft with his hands behind his head. Safarini negotiated with officials, in particular Varaf Daroga, the head of Pan Am's Pakistan operation, stating that if the crew was not sent on the plane within 15 minutes, then Kumar would be shot. Shortly thereafter, Safarini became impatient with the officials and grabbed Kumar and shot him in the head in front of witnesses both on and off the aircraft. Safarini heaved Kumar out of the door onto the tarmac below. Pakistani personnel on the tarmac reported that Kumar was still breathing when he was placed in an ambulance, but he was pronounced dead on the way to the hospital in Karachi. Safarini joined the hijackers and ordered the senior flight purser Nia Banat to collect the passports of all passengers. She complied with this request. During the collection of the passports, believing passengers with American passports would be singled out by the hijackers, Bannett and the other air hostesses under her command proceeded to hide some of the American passports under seats, and dump the rest down a rubbish chute. After the passports had been collected Bannett came onto the intercom and asked for Michael John Thexton, a British citizen, to come to the front of the plane. He went through the curtain into the front of the plane where he came face to face with Safarini, who was holding Thexton's passport. He asked Thexton if he was a soldier and if he had a gun, Thexton replied, No. He ordered Thexton onto his knees. Safarini told the officials that if anyone came near the plane that he would go on to kill another passenger. Varaf Daroga told Safarini that there was a crew member on board who was able to use the cockpit radio and asked him to negotiate through radio. Safarini went back to Thexton and asked him whether he would like a drink of water, to which Thexton replied, Yes. Safarini also asked Thexton if he was married, and claimed he did not like all this violence and killing and said that the Americans and Israelis had taken over his country and left him unable to lead a proper life. One of the hijackers ordered Thexton back through the plane to a seat. The hijack stalemate continued on into the night. During the stalemate, senior flight purser Nia Bannett secretly removed a page from her manual that explained all the procedures for the 3R aircraft door and placed it inside of a magazine and handed it to the passenger near the door. She instructed him to read the magazine and then close it up, but refer to it later if necessary. This page included information on how to open the exit door and deploy the slide down to the apron. About 2100 the auxiliary power unit shut down, all lighting turned off, and emergency lights came on. Passengers at the front were ordered toward the back, while passengers at the back were ordered forward. Since the aisles were already full of passengers, those passengers standing just sat down. With the plane out of power and sitting in near darkness, a hijacker at the 1L door said a prayer and then aimed to shoot at the explosive belt another hijacker, standing by the 1R door, was wearing. The intent was to cause an explosion massive enough to kill all passengers and crew on board, as well as themselves. Since the cabin was dark, the hijacker missed, causing only a small detonation. Immediately the hijackers began shooting their weapons into the cabin at passengers and attempted to throw their grenades. Yet again the lack of light caused them to not pull pins fully and to create only small explosions. Ultimately it was the bullets that created the most damage, since each bullet would bounce off aircraft cabin surfaces and create crippling shrapnel. Bannett opened one of the doors. If she wanted, she could have jumped out and run but she decided not to and instead started helping the passengers to escape. An air hostess at the 3L door opened the door, although the slide did not deploy, several passengers and crew jumped down the 15 feet or 6 meters, 20 feet, to the tarmac. 
The passenger that was near 3R had read the page the flight attendant earlier gave him and was able to successfully open that door. It was the only door open to have the slide deploy. Ultimately this slide allowed for more passengers to evacuate safely and without injuries. Nia Bannett was injured in the shooting while shielding three children from the bullets of the hijacker and died subsequently. Twenty passengers were killed and over a hundred were injured. Assault Pakistan quickly sent in the Pakistan Army's Special Services Group SSG commandos and Pakistan Rangers were put on high alert. The 17-hour long hijacking came to an end when the hijackers opened fire on the passengers at 21.30 Pakistan Standard Time, but soon ran out of ammunition, resulting in some passengers fleeing the aircraft through the aircraft's emergency exits. The SSG responded by storming the aircraft and seizing the hijackers. The SSG commando unit was headed by Brigadier Tariq Mehmood and the Shaheen Company of the SSG's 1st Commando Battalion carried out the operation. Passengers <laughs> 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 The 381 total passengers plus crew on Panam 73 were citizens of 14 different countries. Citizens of India represented roughly 26% of the people on board the flight, and 28% of those killed. <laughs> Nationalities Aftermath Trial and sentencing On July 6, 1988, five Palestinian men were convicted in Pakistan for their roles in the hijacking and murders and sentenced to death, Zaid Hassan Abd al-Latif Safarini, Wadud Muhammad Hafiz al-Turki, Jamal Saeed Abdul Rahim, Muhammad Abdullah Khalil Hussein ar rahayal and Muhammad Ahmed al-Munawar. The sentences were later commuted to life in prison. According to a CNN report, Safarini was handed over to the FBI from a prison in Pakistan in September 2001, however, other sources claim he was released by the Pakistanis and later captured by the FBI. He was taken to the United States where on May 13, 2005 he was sentenced to a 160-year prison term. At the plea proceeding, Safarini admitted that he and his fellow hijackers committed the offences as members of the Abu Nadal organization, also called the ANO, a designated terrorist organization. The other four prisoners either escaped or were released from Adiala jail in Rawalpindi, reportedly in January 2008. Topic Libyan involvement and legal action Libya has been accused of sponsoring the hijacking, as well as carrying out the bombings of Pan Am Flight 103 in 1988 and Uta Flight 772 in 1989. In August 2003, Libya accepted responsibility for the actions of its officials in respect of the bombing Pan Am Flight 103, but was silent on the question of the Pan Am Flight 73 hijacking. Libya offered $2.7 billion USD in compensation to the families of the 270 victims of Pan Am Flight 103 and, in January 2004, agreed to pay $170 million to the families of the 170 UTA victims. The seven American UTA victims' families refused the offer and instead filed a claim for $2.2 billion against Libya. From 2004 to 2006 the US and UK opened up relations with Libya, including removing sanctions and removing the country as a sponsor of terrorism. 
In June 2004, a volunteer group of families and victims from the incident, Families from Pan Am Flight 73, was formed to work toward a memorial for those killed in the incident, to seek the truth behind this terrorist attack, and to hold those responsible for it accountable. On April 5, 2006, the law firm of Crowell & Mooring LLP, representing the surviving passengers, estates and family members of the hijacking victims, announced it was filing a civil suit in U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia seeking $10 billion in compensatory damages, plus unspecified punitive damages, from Libya, Muammar al-Gaddafi and the five convicted hijackers. The lawsuit alleged Libya provided the Abu Nadal organization with material support and also ordered the attack as part of a Libyan-sponsored terrorist campaign against American, European and Israeli interests. British media that was critical of normalization of relations between Gaddafi and the West reported in March 2004, days after Prime Minister Tony Blair visited Tripoli, that Libya was behind the hijacking. As of September 2015, about $700 million of funds that Libya gave the USA to settle claims related to Libyan sponsored terrorism has not been distributed to families of victims who were Indian passport holders. Topic. Reward and reported killing of accused Zaid Hassan Abd al-Latif Safarini was extradited to the U.S. by the government of Pakistan. He is serving his 160-year sentence at the Federal Correctional Complex in Terre Haute, Indiana. On December 3, 2009, the FBI, in coordination with the State Department, announced a $5 million reward for information that leads to the capture of each of the four remaining hijackers of Pan Am 73, who were reported to have been released from prison in Pakistan in 2008. One of the four, Jamal Saeed Abdul Rahim, was reported killed in a drone strike on January 9, 2010, in Pakistan. His death was never confirmed and he remains on the FBI's most wanted terrorists list and the State Department's rewards for justice list. In hopes of generating new leads for the alleged hijackers, the FBI released New Age progressed images on January 11, 2018. The case is still under investigation by the Washington Field Office of the Bureau. Topic. Aircraft The aircraft was a four-engine Boeing 747-121 delivered to Pan Am on 18 June 1971, with registration N656PA and named Clipper Live Yankee by the airline. It was later renamed and at the time of the incident was named Clipper Empress of the Seas. After the incident the aircraft was renamed Clipper New Horizons. Pan Am sold the aircraft to Evergreen International in 1988 and then leased it back. The aircraft was returned by Pan Am to Evergreen in April 1991. Evergreen scrapped the aircraft the next month. In popular culture The film Nia was released in 2016 depicting the hijacking and the actions of all the flight attendants on the aircraft. Nia Bannett was the senior fight purser and the youngest awardee of the highest Indian bravery award, Ashoka Chakra. She also received the United States Special Courage Award and the Pakistani Tamga e Insaniyat. Topic. See also 1986 bombing of Libya Pan Am Flight 103 Uta Flight 772 Notes <laughs> <laughs>